Good morning, everyone. It's April 16th, 2021. I'm Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop, and we are on week 27 of Socialites. So we only have about eight or nine more blocks left, but this is our free sew along where you get the free patterns at Fat Quarter Shop. We have three different free sizes. So we have three inch, six inch, and nine inch. And when we started this off on the live stream, at first I demo demoed six inch blocks. And then after I did that, I put that into a quilt so you could see. And then I demoed the nine inch blocks. And now the last couple, the last 11, I'm gonna demo in the three inch size so that you can watch all these videos and just get different tips on working with different sized blocks. And um, this week's block is designed by Vanessa Christensen of V and Co. And we're gonna show you her block. She used ombre confetti as that gold dot and then the ombre wovens for her block. Now the ombre wovens will be in stock June, 2021. So they're not in stock yet. And if you look at her block, you can see that, you know, she didn't pay attention to the direction of the stripes. They kind of go whichever way. So, and she, you can see that the hourglass, she kind of used the lighter side. And then for the inside, she kind of used the darker side of the ombre. So you can play with her ombre and get lots of fun looks. And we have her ombre in like solids, dots, all kinds of um, things. So there's lots of ombres that you can work with now. So I'm gonna show you my blocks first. This is the block, it's called Ernest. It's block 27. And I made this block using the Homestead Fabric Collection and this white on white dot, that's my favorite. The SKU number is 20708-40. I'm also gonna be using this in the Spring, Spring Brook Quilt Along that's starting next Monday. So you're gonna see this next week in a block. This block consists of hourglass blocks on the outside and half square triangles. So the way that we're gonna do this today is the hourglass blocks we're gonna make bigger and trim down. That's how I always make my hourglass blocks. And the triangles, we're gonna, the half square triangles, we're gonna use triangles on a roll paper. And then we're gonna assemble it. I would say this one is beginner level. And so these are my three blocks. And remember at the end of this, my nine inch blocks and my six inch blocks are gonna be put into a quilt an auction for Make-A-Wish. My three inch blocks, I'm gonna put in a quilt and just keep so that we have something when we wanna show it in previous years that we have a record of it. So those are my blocks. And these are our sample maker blocks. So you can see kind of the difference. This one is Quotation Fabric by Zen Chic and Teresa made this one in the three inch size. This is Figs and Shirtings Fabric by Fig Tree made by Deborah. So the, that's our three inch lineup. And then for six inch, we have Folk Tail Fabric by Layla Boutique and Terry made this one. This is Shine On Fabric by Bonnie and Camille and it's made by Sue. And that's our six inch lineup. And then I'm gonna move all of these out of the way and show you the nine inch, which is cider fabric by basic gray made by angel. And I wanted to kind of show you when you put the center together, it really doesn't matter which way it goes because like, here's your centers goes this way or this way. It really doesn't matter. So when you're putting this together, as long as these two are kind of going a direction, it'll be fine. And I'll show you some different layouts that you can do in the center before we um, do that. But there's there's a little bit of playroom here you could do. You could even inverse the fabrics and have these white and it would be like more of a white center. So I'll kind of show you that. So these are our blocks. And I've already taken my, my patterns out of my Socialites binder. So I just have all my Socialites in here and I'm using these, I think they're page protectors, right Lily? Yes. So I'm using page protectors from like Office Depot or whatever. And the reason I do that is sometimes if I punch a hole in a pattern, maybe, you know, like a piece of the pattern might come off since we don't go all the, you know, we don't give a big left a line because there's not enough room. So I've already got my pattern out. And then one thing that I have found is that using this sticky note really helps me because 
if I was just doing the three inch block, I would somehow start cutting all this because I have hyperactive syndrome. Not really, but just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So I'm gonna focus on this block. And let's see, so my A and my D right here are hourglass blocks. So I'm gonna just put hourglass here. And then my C and E are half square triangles, so I'll put that. And then I'll know my hourglass, I'm gonna cut larger so I can trim down. My half square triangles, I'm gonna use my triangle paper. And then the B and F, I'm just gonna cut as stated in the pattern. So anytime you're working on a pattern, I think it's a great idea to just print your pattern, look over it, whether it's our pattern, Corey Yoder's pattern, Fig Tree, Lori Holt, anybody's pattern, just read through it, see how you want to piece it that works best in your sewing room and um, kind of make some notes. So I'm going to, I've been using this fabric. So last week I made this little block. So block 26 was this one. And even though I use the clappers, which this is the clapper, it's, it's all like, it's like not, it's not flat at all. <laughs> it's like um, bowing like that. It's like a little bowl. So that's kind of funny. So that's my first one. So I'm just gonna go in order. I'm just gonna pick this fabric and I cut my Bella Solid, which is 9,900. I think I use color 200 and I'm gonna pull that. And again, I'm using the Figs and Shirtings collection. And when all of my blocks are done, I will put them into a setting so you can see what to do with them because there is a setting for this quilt, but if you don't wanna make a quilt that big, you can think outside the box and like put it in another setting or do something else with it. You don't have to do exactly what the pattern says. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pull up my ironing board and okay all you guys have been asking but there was a lot of brown on the june taylor mat and the reason why is we had something on the bottom of the iron so i cleaned the iron with this iron off dritz i don't even know it's the first time i've ever used it so we're gonna hope that the iron is good now mm -hmm. and then i am gonna just iron my two pieces this, I'm just using a layer cake, and so I, I want to show you. When you starch a layer cake, this is exactly what will happen. One will still be ten, one side will be 10 inches, and one side will be nine and a half. So anytime you starch, one direction of your fabric will shrink half an inch, one direction will stay completely the same. And then I just cut some of my background up into little pieces you can see I did it with my scissors but I'm just gonna iron my fabric so if you want to know about starching um, I learned that from Lisa Bonjean her YouTube channel she recently did a video where she um, went over how she does it and I've shown how I've done it I got that idea from her but this has already been starched and dried and her and I the great thing about it is she does hers a little bit different than mine she uses um, the firm and I just use the original. So, and she starches hers even more than mine. So hers like literally, like, wow. see how it's like flat? Hers would like stand up. So if y'all think I starch, she does more than me. So I'm going to just start cutting. So for my A and my D, I need two, two and a half inch squares. And I'm just gonna cut those. And we have already written this pattern where we have accounted for cutting larger. And the way you can tell is if you go down here, it says trim. So we don't need to cut bigger than two and a half because we wrote the pattern that way. Now, not all patterns will be written that way. The math for hourglass, I'm gonna kind of show you. If your finished size you take your unfinished size. So this one is one and a half by one and a half, the one that I'm making. Take half inch off, your finished size is one inch. Add one and a quarter inches to your finished size, so that means you would cut it two and a quarter. So we've already added a quarter inch and done two and a half. So I'll show you another one. If your unfinished is two and a half, 
your finish would be two because you take half inch off. Add one and a quarter. That would be three and a quarter. Add quarter inch and cut three and a half. So anytime you're doing it, just cut it a little. And if you want to cut it bigger than two and a half, you can cut it bigger than two and a half. I'm just going to cut these using a small ruler since I just have a little bit of fabric. And let's see. Are there any questions, Lily? Yeah, we have a few from Shannon Thompson uh, about when you mentioned the ombre wovens. What do you mean when you say woven? How is that different from regular quilting fabric? So the woven fabric is thinner and it's actually woven. So it's not 100% cotton. It's more of like a woven. And um, when it comes in, I can show it to you. I know I've shown it in a previous live stream. Of course, I don't remember off the top of my head which one that was but um, she does have wovens. They're harder to work with for me. I just cut these into fourths, but they're harder to work. Those fabrics are harder to work with um, for me, but um, some people love them and can work with them just as good. On the half square triangles, what I'm gonna do here, if you're making the three inch size, which is the first one listed. It says one by one. You take half inch off, that's half an inch. So this is H050, which is our half inch triangles on a roll. If you're making, so if you're doing the three inch block, you need the H050. If you are making the six inch block, you need the H100, which is one inch. And if you are making the nine inch block, you need the one and a half, which is H150 right here. So I'm gonna move these because we don't need them. And from here, we need two squares because it says, actually, we need one, one square. Yeah, one square. So I'm just going to cut one square off of here. That's even easier. One square. I mean, who can't do a square? And I'm very excited that we have this HO50 because um, it's always so hard for me to do before we had the paper. And I'm just gonna put my fabrics right sides together so my half square triangle comes out. I'm gonna actually show y'all. I have some quilting bloopers that I made about two nights ago, mm. which is why you should never quilt at night when you're tired, but I kinda <laughs> had to do it. So I made all kinds of mistakes and I saved them for you guys because I thought y'all would think it was funny. <laughs> so here's my um, C and E's, right sides together and paper on top. For my C, I need, well actually, let's see, my F's, I need two one inch squares, so I'm going to just do that real quick from here. Excuse the cars going by, there's people that like, <laughs> they drive really fast cars next door and they like to rev their engines. Mm -hmm. They think they're cool. <laughs> I just always hope they're not driving when I'm driving because they drive too fast. Yeah, they do. And I drive like a grandma. <laughs> okay, so my these are my Fs. So I'm gonna use my alpha bitties, put my alpha bitties on here. And then let's see to cut, I need four one and a half inch squares for my B. So I will cut now I've got all this left, so I can save this for my scrap buckets. And I'm actually gonna show you an example of my scrap buckets. I know I've shown it before, but I'm actually gonna start showing you how I do it in real life. So Today I've shown, I brought some examples to show you how I'm actually utilizing them. So I'll take this home, cut it up in my scrap bucket. What I have found that's different from kind of how I was doing it before is I got a cart at Container Store and it's really cute. It's white, it was like $19.99 and it's circle, it's like a little circle. The front camera. Oh, sorry. So it's like a circle and it's three tiered, but it's a circle so it's cute. But then it's not very, um, efficient because you can't really fit stuff in a circle but anyway i've decided my second my second shelf in this little circle i just leave all my scraps that are starched and then once a week i cut them back down so because i used to just do it all the time and it kind of got 
a little bit like I would have to get my boxes out to fill them up and then put my boxes back. So I decided to just put them in one spot. So I'll take that home and put it there. But it's a really cute card at, um, it's, it's um, I think it's new because when I went, they only had one and it was put together and they were like, well, do you want to buy the one that's put together? And I was like, absolutely. I don't want to put it together because I don't know how. Aww. So it was so cute. We just like carried it in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's cute, but I would say if I had to go back, mm, it's kind of weird because it's a circle, so mm -hmm. it doesn't exactly. So I'm cutting four one and a half inch squares. So I cut a three inch square using this three and a half inch. And I'm just gonna sub cut it. Now it moved a little bit, see how it moved? So I'm gonna just cut these like this because it moved a little bit. So this block's pretty easy. It's, you know, basic quilting philosophies. <laughs> quilting philosophies with Kimberly. Yeah, I just made it up. Again, I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna start here. I'm gonna start building my block. I'm gonna start with step one, doo -doo -doo, which is right here. We're gonna make four of these. So I'm gonna lay them out and answer questions. So I'm just gonna kind of lay everything out and I'll answer Lily's questions. Mm -hmm. From Charlotte Walker, I notice you don't always choose to cut the corner blocks oversize in order to trim them down in the end. What is your criteria for doing this or is it just random? Okay, so I just don't, I've, I've seen some people on Facebook do that and then they said they learned it from me and I kind of cracked up because I thought, well, I make some stuff bigger, but not that. So I'm gonna show you what she's asking and explain it. And I don't know why I don't do it. I mean, I've never tried it. So what they're saying is, okay. So right here, can we zoom in a little bit? Yeah, thanks. So this is a half square triangle, so ignore that. This is a corner square. This is the corner item. Some people make this bigger and then trim it down when they trim their block. I've just never done that. I usually work with the inside pieces and then trim them down. So um, I think it's great if it works for you. I think it's great. Maybe I'll try it, but I haven't done that before. I don't think, I mean, I don't know. Maybe y'all can go back to some videos that maybe I did at one time, <laughs> um, but I don't think I do that part. So I don't know, I just don't. So what she's asking is on this block, this would be the corner square would be this B, these B's. So I don't make those bigger. I don't know, I just, I mean, I guess I could and we could try it. This, okay, so I'm gonna start with this because on, if you look at my sewing machine, I already have this open toe foot on and I don't wanna have to change it. So I'm gonna put my stitch length at like a 1.5 stitch directly on the lines. And then we can come back to that later. I'm gonna switch my foot to the quarter inch foot. So from here, I'm gonna stitch, okay good. I'm gonna stitch one of these together and one of these together. Keep it all chained together. And then one of these, one of these, chain. One of these, one of these. And then I'm gonna show you how you can iron them all at the same time and just keep it going and I think you'll like it. So on these, the pieces are really small. So I'm actually not gonna pin because I feel like if I pin right here, yeah, I feel like if I pin, it's just gonna interfere. So I'm just not gonna pin on these really small blocks. And I'm gonna just do the top. I'm gonna move my stitch length back a little bit and then do the second part. And I'm just using a quarter inch foot. Keep going. Are there any questions? From Linda Sherman, do you have color bleed or fading when you starch? No. If you, if you starch a fabric and it bleeds, I would throw it in the trash. I would not use it. 
Um, my bathtub at the bottom of it, it just says like a bunch of clear liquid. And I don't use that bathtub. I mean, I just rinse it out every now and then. It's disgusting. Like I have to get it, it's like sticks to the bottom. It's disgusting. I'll never use that bathroom. From Deborah Mastis, can you still use Quilter Select Free Fuse when you starch? Okay, I've never used that product, but I've heard it's, I've heard it's amazing. And um, I haven't tried it. I did take it home, but then I just, I never tried it. It sells like crazy, but I think you could. But I've never used that product, so I don't know, but I don't know why you wouldn't be able to. I mean, any reason for me to starch is a good reason, so I'd probably, <laughs> I'm, I'm on the starch train. So I've left all this chain together. Do, do, do. <laughs> so now what I'm gonna do is set my seam and when you set your seam, you just put your iron on it, let it sit a little bit, maybe five seconds. Just make sure you're not rocking your iron. And then just, I'm gonna press to one side and then I'll go back and press them all open. I don't like to press open to begin because I will burn myself, so. And that's honestly the only reason. So if you can do it without burning yourself, you're gonna save yourself a lot of time, but I already know I'm gonna burn myself and I don't wanna jump up and down on the camera and screen. <laughs> From Kathy Cronin, if you want to start by cutting bigger and then trim down, like for the hourglass, how do I know how much extra fabric to purchase from the suggested fabric requirement in the pattern? It's such a small amount that I don't think it matters. It's a, like, it's usually a quarter inch I make it bigger, so. I mean, if you want to add extra, you could order a quarter of a yard extra, but I've never, I've never been short. But I will be known to, I will do anything, buy extra fabric, whatever I have to do to make it quicker. Because like for next Friday, I still have to make a bunch of blocks for next Friday. Um, so I'm probably gonna get up at the crack of dawn tomorrow. My daughter, oh my gosh, we're having a birthday party. Can you imagine 10 girls at my house that are 14? This is gonna be fabulous <laughs> with my son that likes to scream at them. And I'm literally, <laughs> he screams at them like a monster. Aww. Oh my word, it's just gonna be fabulous. And we have to drive them to Cheesecake Factory. Ooh. I don't know what that bill's gonna be because they will be ordering whatever. All the cheesecake. Uh, well, she has her own cookie cake. So I'm like, I'm gonna have to break oh. in and be like, you are not doing that. Okay, so this is an hourglass, this is an hourglass, this is an hourglass, and this is an hourglass. So I'm just gonna cut between them. So one, two, three, four. And then I am going to find my pins. Oh my gosh, they're right in front of me. Here's my pin, sorry. And I'm gonna clip now and then, um, what do you call it? Um, nest my seams and put a pin right there. And the reason I clip my seams is when you press open, if you have not clipped that seam, it, will, you're, it won't iron, it'll just stand up. So if you're not pressing open it, you can leave it. Yeah, so we have all these little girls coming over. They're really sweet and everything, but oh my word, I just don't know. Like, I don't even know how to handle one 14-year-old, much less. Mm. And I have three other kids, so my house is going to be nice and crazy. <laughs> and she has dance for four hours tomorrow, and I'm just like, oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Yeah, she's got some show. So now I'm just gonna use the quarter inch foot and stitch down here. Now, I'm not pinning at the top and the bottom because I'm trimming my hourglass down so it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. If I was not doing that, there would be pins there. But because I'm cheating and trimming down, I'm not putting pins there. Con Cook had said, here comes the polka pin. Yes. Did she put polka instead of poke? Like polka pin. Oh, that's funny. Okay, that lined up. I was worried because I moved the, um, I pulled my pin out early. I was worried it wasn't going to work, but it did. 
And I'm trying to keep my hand, my right hand, as much out of focus, but it's really hard because I'm right-handed. And we don't have the lever here to pull the thing up because there's nowhere for it to go on the top of a table. You mean the knee lift, right? Yeah, well, I don't know what I said, but yes, knee lift is what I meant to say. <laughs> so. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, and I had to tell my daughter, I was like, you know, you really should like clean your room or something. Like, oh. there's people coming over, like, where are they gonna sit? It's kinda dirty in here. She's like, oh, it's fine, they don't care. I'm like, okay, well, then I guess I'm gonna clean it. I mean, I'm not gonna really, but I'm gonna make her do it. <laughs> okay, so now I've got these done. Four hourglass. This is gonna make two half square triangles. So I'm gonna trim this down. When you're trimming with triangle paper, no matter what brand, just make sure you trim right on the line so you get accurate results. If you trim too far outside the line, you will have too fat of half square triangles. If you trim too far into the left, you're gonna have too small half square triangles. They're so tiny. Yeah, they're tiny. I like making small stuff. I like small stuff and I cannot lie, sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh my There's goodness. your musical entertainment for the day. Yeah, please don't um, give me a YouTube block because I sang Sir Mix a lot. Change the words, so. <laughs> yeah, it's a cover. It, it's under fair use. Uh, question from Sandy Taylor. Can you go over unfinished and finished? Yes, I can. I'm going to do that. I can do that in just a second. Let me iron and then I'll do that. And then, um, can I have some of those blocks? Just pick one of the big ones. Yeah, that one's good. Perfect. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll explain it on this one. Thanks. So like this, I just set my seam, press to one side, then press open. But yeah, I'll answer any questions and then I will, I will do the unfinished. Okay. A few people are wondering why you don't use a wool pressing mat. I don't like them. Sorry. I have, okay, I'm super sensitive to smell. I can smell, if you smoke, I can smell you a mile away. I can smell anything. And they smell like a dog. And I already have a dog. I don't need another oh. dog smell in my house. They just smell, I can, I don't like them. Mm -hmm. I've never liked them. I, um, people swear by them. They think they're like the best thing. They just smell like dog hair because you're putting, it's animal hair. I mean, it's actual animal hair. Like, that's disgusting. Sorry, I shouldn't be saying these things. But yeah, I just don't like them. And, and there are products to help with the smell if that's what you prefer. There are? I think so, there's like sprays. Yeah. Yeah, if I have to spray something extra, I'm not doing that. <laughs> okay, so this is tiny. Oh my gosh. I know. So little. This is when I sometimes burn myself. Do, do, do. Uh, Katie McNatt said, Container Store's return policy allows you to return things for 365 days. Oh, I've used, I've had it for a couple of months. I'm not going to return it. It's too cute. I also had to get a small one because um, I bought this like little bed at Home Goods. It's not a bed. It's not a couch. I don't know what it is, but it's cute. And my dog sits on it, so there's no room because he has to take up the whole room. Oh, the one in your sewing room. Yeah, I okay. put a little couch in my sewing room. Y'all could see it if you watch the Cross Stitch channel. Yes. But yeah, I bought it. So there's really nowhere for a big cart to go. Because, you know, my dog has to... He has to have a bed, you know. Hmm. And Crafting a Plan Life was asking, didn't she make her hourglass blocks bigger a week or two ago and then turn down? Yeah, I did. I always do. I never make an hourglass block any other way. So some of you guys have asked if we could make some of the triangle paper or foundation paper with it. And I don't think you need to because you can do it this way. And I only really make the paper if it's gonna help me, but since I feel like I already do this one okay, then I feel okay with it. So I'm gonna put these, I'm gonna put these little triangles here and then we're gonna trim these down. I'm gonna use a rotating mat. 
and I am gonna answer that question. I have not forgot. I just um, I'm gonna do it after this. Do you want the smaller rotating mat, or are you good with the big one? No, I'm good. Okay. We could put it down here for a future week, though. But okay. yeah. Um. So this says trim hourglass unit to measure one and a half by one and a half. So this is where I really wish I had a one and a half inch square ruler. So Creative Grids, please make me one. Mm. So you have to do all four sides. And so if you take one and a half divided by two, that's three quarters of an inch. So I need to put my three quarters of an inch right there. So you can see three quarters of an inch and I need this to touch the point and I'm gonna cut two sides. Well, I guess I could have just turned it around. And then from here, I just put it on the one and a half. And when you're doing this, you wanna make sure this lines up, this lines up, and this little thing lines up right there. Go. So now these are unfinished one and a half. When you put it in your block, can I see the three inch size of this? Now that I told you the wrong one, thanks. Okay, so here's finished and unfinished. This is the same block, just different fabric. This is one and a half inches unfinished. When you put that right here in the seam, quarter inch comes off here, quarter inch comes off here because it's sewn into your seam, right there, see? You add those B squares, this should be one inches. So your unfinished is always half an inch bigger than your finished because you have a quarter inch seam on the left, a quarter inch seam on the right, a quarter inch plus a quarter inch is half an inch. Let me know if that makes sense. And I'm gonna keep trimming these. I will say I don't love trimming these when I don't have the exact size. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe I'll email Brad. I'm gonna email Brad to make me one. That's gonna be a really small ruler. Oh, I need it, <laughs> I need it. Let's see, one, two, three. So you, yeah, if this is not lined up at that little area, it's gonna be funky. And then Kathy Blacklock asking about Emma's uh, shindig says, it's not a sleepover, is it? Oh no, 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 mm -mm. I mean, I really, honestly though, I really wouldn't care. One time when her best friend's name is Kaya. So Kaya comes over all the time. I think because I'm way less strict than Kaya's mom is what I figured out. The last time, okay, I go to bed at 9.30. 10, the latest, 10.30, I mean, like, maybe. There's no, I mean, I'm sleeping. The last time Kaya came over, I just went for a walk at like three o'clock in the morning in our neighborhood. I was like, excuse me? You cannot just go for a walk at three o'clock in the morning. Oh dear. But they did. I mean, I'm just like, okay. But that's what I mean. I'm just like, I don't think they did anything wrong. I mean. Yeah, I got in trouble for doing that at, around her age as well. So. Well, I, okay, in Austin, you want to know what I did? I walked on Wickersham Lane all the way down Riverside. Oh, my gosh. In the 80s. <gasps> I was, Girl. I was not, that was not safe. But I didn't know, and I lived, thank God, I lived, because that was not all the way down Wickersham Lane. My friend lived on Wickersham Lane all the way at the very end. I walked all the way down, walked to the H-E-B. Wow. My dad would have killed me if he knew. Yeah, I have friends who live right there. Oh, and my mom is actually watching this, so she'll probably say, what did you do and whose house were you at? Oh, no. My, mo my mom was not very strict, so. My dad was very strict, though, but my mom didn't really care. She trusted me. Hmm. Okay, I'm just re-threading my machine. It got unthreaded. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to build the block. I got all of my pieces right here. Okay, so we're gonna try to build them. 
And this is where when I'm real tired, I mess up. And you're going to see in a little bit what I did the other night. Let's see. This way. This way. This way. Just make sure your hourglasses are going the right way. So these go horizontal. These go vertical. I mean, if that's what you want to call it. Okay, so I'm going to show you now what you can do in the center to make it different. So the way that it's written is to do this. Now, of course, there's seams. So if you do that, it's going to be like a dark, right? But what you could do, I'm going to show you a little alternate if you wanted to change it a little bit. I'm gonna cut some background squares real quick. Do, do, do. So you could, if you wanted to, you could have a lighter center like that. Or you could even do this. You could do that. That would be really pretty. Mm -hmm. And your fourth option is that. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do with this. You can change your center however you want, and I won't be offended. I will think it's great. So I'm going to try to go back to the original way so that I don't mess up. <laughs> Wait. That's not the original there way. There you go. I'm like, <laughs> okay. And it's always fun to do that on these design boards. And I mean, yeah, I wasted two inches of fabric. Okay, big deal, no big deal. Don't be afraid to like look at stuff, see if you like it before you commit. Because once you sew, I mean, you're committing. Before you start sewing it all together, a question from Gina Wilkinson Trappier. Can you explain why you're lining up the three quarter mark on the right side for when you are trimming down the hourglass? Okay, I can. So this is, this is one and a half inches unfinished. And the reason I know that is my pattern tells me because when you follow an it's so Emma or fat quarter shot pattern, we give you as much detail as possible. There's no thinking. I can't promise every pattern will do that, but we give you as much detail as you need. So this is one and a half. This needs to be the center and it needs to be the center from here, from the top and the bottom and the left and the right. So three quarters, three quarters, three quarters, three quarters. Three quarters plus three quarters is one and a half. So you take the unfinished size that you're trimming it down to, divide it by two, and that's where your point is. Now the best thing is, when you make hourglass blocks, a lot of the time, they are two and a half inches, which was right there, and it is already marked on the ruler right there with a little white, so you don't have to do anything. If I was doing that, that would have been in the center and I wouldn't even have to think. So that's why I need a one and a half inch square ruler. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm gonna sew down this seam. I'm gonna use my quick press seam roller so I don't have to go to the iron and then come back and do that. And the quick press seam roller is by Lori Holt. I love it. Um, I use it way more than I thought I would. So, and again, this is so, t I usually use a lot of pins. This is so tiny. I feel like if you put a pin right here, you're gonna, you're gonna create like a bump that's not needed. So when I work with really tiny pieces, I don't pin and that's kind of like, seems counterproductive, but it's really not. But like I always say, do whatever you wanna do. Do whatever works for you. Doesn't matter to me. Okay, so from here, instead of going all the way to the iron, I'm gonna just press these open. With a seam press. So I'm just gonna I mean, you can press it with your fingers too. And they're so small 
there you go, it stays. So now I need to sew those together. And that just saves me a trip. Like if you're sitting at your sewing machine and you know, your ironing table's right, not right there. Well, you can just stay right there. Keep watching Netflix, <laughs> keep going. Okay, so here I am gonna pin. I'm gonna pin the outside. Try to line that up. Pin right there. And then just start sewing. And I pull my pins out right when I get to them usually. I hope it lines up. Ooh, it did. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Tiny, tiny. Can you imagine? Let's make a quilt. Let's make a quilt with a thousand of these. That would be fun. Oh my gosh. No, it would not. Let's not do that. Let's just do a little bit. <laughs> From M. Weber, what kind of chair does Kimberly use with her bad back? I use these chairs that were, I think, made by Koala or Baby Lock. I don't remember. They were expensive, I will tell you that. I got them at so much more in Austin on Anderson Lane, but they're now discontinued because I actually have two of them. I have one at my desk and then one that I sit in when I sew and sometimes my dog sits in the chair too because he thinks it's his chair. And then I have to move him to the other chair because you know his couch is not good enough. Like that's just like not enough room for him. So yeah, no, I, I think they're discontinued, mm -hmm. but I mean, I've had one of them like probably as long as Emma's been alive, so 14 years. I mean, they're probably oh, wow. disgusting. They need to be washed. They ha I do know they have thread all over them and I can't get the thread off. Like I've tried, but it's like, I think all that starch just stuck it to the chair. Oh. So now I'm gonna sew down here. And I like the color, um, it's cream. You can see it in my cross stitch storage video that's on the Fat Quarter Shop cross stitch channel, mm. which is called Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube. Yes. I think I just bit off a little seam in there. I think I'm gonna have to unrip something. Mm. Maybe not, let's see. I just felt like I was not, ooh, it's right. Yay. Thank goodness, I felt like I had chopped something off, okay. I'm gonna actually iron this. Kim Rupi said, the foundation papers are the bomb. Love, love, love them. Can't believe I took so long to try them. Thanks, Back Order Shop. Thanks, well they just, like some of them are new, but man, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you in a little bit what I did on, I think it was Tuesday night. Maybe it was Wednesday, who knows. Um, and how I just use them in all the stuff. They're awesome, it saves me time, it's accurate. I can um, watch movie, not movies, documentaries easier because I don't have to pay attention as much. <laughs> like I don't have to be as accurate, so I can just kind of go fast. Mm -hmm. I heard there's a new documentary on HBO today and then I found out what it was about and I was like, oh man, nothing. That's oh. nothing for me. Oh. It's on Mark Wahlberg. I'm like, oh yeah, no. Oh. I was all excited, it's called The Wall Street like the Wahlberger. So I thought, uh, or Wahlberg, isn't that his name Wahlberg? Yeah. It's about his businesses. And I'm like, mm, no thanks. <laughs> no crime. No crime, nobody got killed. <laughs> he was a gangster though, I will tell you that. Oh. He's, got, he's got some bad, I'm surprised he hasn't been canceled. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think I'm gonna watch it unless it has, if it gets really good reviews, I'll watch it. It's also like a series like I'll Be Gone in the Dark was. And um, if I watch it, I would wait till the whole thing is out because I can't wait. I don't have the patience to wait for another episode. Um, and here real quick, can you ex explain again what setting your seam is? Okay, setting my seam is right there. I put the iron on the actual seam. It's hot, it locks those stitches in. And then when I go to one side, it's just gonna be flatter and I'm not gonna have a duck pleat on the front. Duck pleats are, I have certain things that I can't stand. No duck pleats. And I see duck pleats and quilts all the time. 
And I say make your quilt however you want, but man, don't show me one with a duck pleat because it drives me crazy. It's like I can't sleep at night. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things that I can't. Aww. So yeah, it helps me not have a duck pleat. It just makes it flatter. And I mean, a funny story is when I was learning, I took a class and one of the ladies kept telling the teacher, she's not setting her seams. And I was like, whatever. And then I realized, okay, the lady was right. Huh. From Jessica Gengenbach, does Kimberly ever use the acorn products to keep the seams flat? I don't. Everyone's talking about those. Oh, I've got okay. okay. Denise they? and I are going to have to figure out how to use them because that's the thing is everyone says they're great. I've watched the videos. I can't figure out how to use them. I want to try it, but I need somebody to show me how to use it. But I've heard they're great. I have heard that. I've heard they're, they're wonderful. But yes, I need to try. I feel like my bag of tricks I have right now works though. So here I'm going to do poke a pin because I have a point right here and a point right here. So I'll poke it in here. See if it's, yep, same thing here. And if you are doing this and your stitches start coming out, your stitch length is too sh long. Like right there, ooh, right there, look. See that? My stitch is too short, see? Look, I can pull um, my stitches out. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to just keep going. But that means I should shorten it a little bit. Oh, that is ugly. Oh. No, no. Um. That's funk. So right here, that is um, not, not good. No, no does not match up, so I'm gonna fix it. And now we're gonna do the seam ripper that works at home and doesn't work on camera because <laughs> it is not my friend. It's camera shy. Yeah, that's what I say. Well, my, that's, that's what I say. it's not my friend. <laughs> Sorry, I can't, I have blind as a bat. So I just try to unpick around the seam, but I have it close to my face because I can't see. And I, I swear on camera, I can't get it to work. But it, this is the best seam ripper in the world and it works at home. But here, I don't know, I get nervous on this camera. Hmm. Are there any other questions? Yeah. From Margaret LeBlanc, what does the clapper do? It makes the seams fatter, flatter. So, Let's don't, laugh. don't laugh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so this is pine wood. It's not painted. And it's somehow the heat, it takes the heat out of the fabric and it makes it flatter. I don't know exactly how it works. I just know it does work. And I use it at home all the time. I think it's maple. You do? I think, at least the Riley Blake ones were maple. Okay, then listen to Lily, I don't know. Yeah. I just know they work. And I know some people have made them, like their husbands have made them, which is totally awesome. Yes. And then they're like, should I paint them? I'm like, oh no, no. definitely do not paint them. I know they should be cute, but I mean, because this one's not very cute. The other ones are, but yeah, I get it. If maybe, I think your paint would just melt off with your iron. Yeah, it would not be good for, it would get into your fabric eventually. And then from Dee Dee Derby, I'm new to sewing. How long ahead of time do you start your fabric? So, the day before I let it sit, but I use a vent in my room and I have this brand new like air purifier and I use them at the same time and it dries faster with that. But um, I let it sit, I mean eight hours, but I usually will starch everything like the day before. So when, when Lori came out with her brand new red sew along on Monday, I starch stuff on Tuesday so that I would be ready the next day to like, you know what I mean? Starch one day and then piece my blocks the next day. 
So when I restarted this seam, I started right at the intersection of the seam instead of over here so that I can see if I get it to match. Because if I have to pull out that seam again, I don't have to pull the whole thing, which usually is what happens. Ooh, it looks pretty. Yay. Okay, so now I'm gonna go the other way. Do, do, do. Okay. Uh, iron. Add the last seam. I'm taking forever. I'm so sorry. You're good. I thought this was a beginner block. Maybe this is not beginner. Um, and while you're ironing, can you tell us what is a duck pleat? Oh my goodness. Quack, quack. I'll show you. I'm gonna do one right now. That's oh, a no. duck pleat. Oh no. Oh, I'm not gonna nice. really iron it, but it means it's not flat. Like there's a gap. And some people will have it like, like that. It's supposed to be flat. They don't iron it all the way. So then when they iron it, it's flat like that. And then they quilt it. And Gina does beautiful quilting and you can put your finger in it. It's gross. Sorry. So it's like when the fabric's just overlapping too much. Yes, that's bubble. what it is. It just, it's, you're just not flat. It's just, no. Mm -mm. It's probably my biggest pet peeve. Like I, I could, I mean, if your points don't match, I can live with that. But duck pleat, oh no. I can't live with it. And then from Kathy Achenbach, when I asked the question about pre-cuts of Kimberly, I'm wondering in general, do you mostly work from fat quarters or layer cakes or charms? Thanks. Layer cakes is my number one. Mm. I love layer cakes. So that's why I started with layer cakes on this one. I like, I like all the cuts, but um, usually layer cakes. And I would rather buy four layer cakes than one fat quarter bundle. And yes, I know that's a waste. But if I don't need big, big, wide pieces, it depends how wide my pieces need to be. Like for Cory Yoder's Sew Along that we're going to talk about in a little bit, I um, am using two layer cakes instead of one fat eighth bundle because mm. it's easier. Well, first of all, when I do my starch, my kid, my kid that likes to lay my starch stuff out, he likes the layer cakes better. He does not like to do fat quarters and he does not like to do yardage. So if I give him layer cake, he loves it. So, you know, my free help, I gotta, gotta have my free help. He loves to do the starch. Yay! Yay! Okay, so this fabric was probably not the best choice for this block because it's got too much white in it. Mm -hmm. So this block is ugly, I don't like it. I should have used a different fabric, but I didn't. So that's what we got. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with this quilt, but that's an example of using, I should have used a much smaller scale fabric for this. It's just too much white showing. So you don't get the full effect. And I'll show you the difference. Now, when it gets in the quilt, I probably won't notice it as much as I do right now. It'll probably be like, yeah, whatever. And okay. Can you get rid of a duck pleat once it's already quilted in? Oh no, you cannot. That's what, that's what kills me. Okay, so see how these half square triangles, the white really pops. Does not pop here. Mm. Pops here. So this is more of a medium block. I don't, I don't like it. I'm not happy with it, but that's okay. I will live with it for today. So what I'm gonna do is put this back in my binder. I'm going to trim my block. So the difference between a trimmed block and an untrimmed block is right here. Oops, sorry, I'm gonna move the, house, move the stuff, sorry. Thank you, Lily. Okay, so this is trimmed. That means all my little trimmings on the edge have been clipped off. See how pretty that one is? This is a step that is not necessary but in my house it's necessary so let's see so I just trim I just try to get the little edges off get it straight I think it's also nicer for the quilters too because then there's not as much like thread everywhere so that is block 27 Yay. named Ernest by Vanessa Gertzen I'm going to show hers again one more time mm -hmm. 
yeah so see how hers looks totally different now that is probably a nine inch or six inch block mm -hmm. so i'm going to um, move the iron real quick so i don't burn myself and then i'm going to sit down and we're going to talk about the block and any questions you have mm -hmm. Um, Marsha Baker pointed out that the duck pleat looks like a duck bill. Yeah, it just, and I made that up. That's just like something I made up. So. Yeah. Will you take that? Sorry. I don't want to burn myself. Let's go. And Sandy Taylor was asking, are you more like your dad or your mom? Exactly like my dad. Spitting image. I have the same attitude. I'm exactly opposite of my mother. Mm. My mother and I have zero in common, and sh this is not saying anything bad. She's she's just like my daughter. So if my daughter likes it, my mom likes it. If they like it, I'm like, that is ugly. Oh. Now, my mom is very passive, and I'm the most unpassive person you would ever meet. But my dad and I are just super close. Like, she knows. Um, there was nobody in this world that like, if I could have anybody, it would be him because he's the most. He was my biggest fan too. Like that was the thing, like he was my biggest fan. When I wanted to start this company, most parents would have been like, you're losing your mind, you have a great paying job, you have a corporate job, you have health insurance, you have. Most parents would have said that. You know what he said? He said, I'm gonna write you a check to pay your health insurance for one year. And if you can make it work, do it. Without that one check, maybe I wouldn't have done it. Wow. Now my mom wrote that check too, <laughs> but I'm just saying like, yeah. yeah. Uh, we do have some new members and super chats that have been coming in. Okay. Uh, new YouTube member, user123, welcome. That's, Love the name. That's cute. And then we had a super chat from Valeria Bauer for 19.99, and Valeria put a little dancing pair with a top hat and a cane that says, you are amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Valeria. Uh, new YouTube member, Debra Mastis. Welcome, Debra. Yay. Yay. And new YouTube member, Mary Van Fons Fosen. Sorry, Mary Van Fosen. Welcome, Mary. Thank you. And new YouTube member, Carolyn Ledoux. Wow, Thank lots you. of new YouTube members. And new YouTube member, Adrian Claus. Welcome, Adrian. Thank you. And then we had a super chat from Pam Chamberlain that says fist bump. Aw, thanks. Yes, and it's for $2.99. Thank, Thank you, Pam. So I wanted to keep you updated on the Serendipity charity. Thank you to all of you. We have raised $68,119. That is going all directly to Make-A-Wish. They already have the funds. They're already granting wishes. Um, so excited to be a part of that. We're definitely gonna meet our goal this year and I'm so excited because I had set the goal pretty high and I didn't think we were gonna meet it. So without you guys, we would not have that. So thank you so much. Um, I wanted to let you know that on the 15th, which was sometime this week, we released row three, which is behind me. It's, I'm gonna point to it. This is row three. So on Monday, I'm gonna make this with you. So if you wanna know how to use paper, tips on foundation paper, join me Monday, 9 a.m. And since we're raising money, because we do these milestones to raise more and more money, this was also loaded yesterday for free. So it's a brand new, it's a free pattern. And we do write instructions for traditional piecing or foundation piecing. So either one, you don't have to buy anything. You can use your scraps. So this is a completely free pattern. Definitely watch us Monday. This is called windfall. It's the windfall block. Windfall block. Okay, Angel designed this. Deborah sewed it and Gina Tell of Thread Graffiti quilted it. So let me know if there's any questions on any of that. It's so pretty. From Susan C, when you send your finished top to the quilter, how much fabric did you put on your edges for the long arm attachment? Okay, so on the front, I do the front just like the pattern says. On the back, I do five inches all the way around. So if you look here,
Sorry, upper camera. Sorry, thank you. Okay, so if this is your backing, I wanna add five inches here, 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 and here. So if this is 20 by 20, I'm gonna do 20 plus five plus five, I'm gonna have 30 and 30. So I give five inches all the way around. Now, that has worked for all of my long arm quilters. I've used lots of long arm quilters. I've used Mike and my long arm. I've used Natalia Bonner. I've used um, a lady in Dallas. I'm trying to think of her name. I'll think of it in a second. But I've used a lot of long arm quilters and I think that standard is the five inches all the way around. And even when I do a crib quilt, I, send, I tend to do the five inches also, just out of habit. It's easy to do the math. You know, if you're adding 10 inches, that's easier to do than eight inches, you know, that kind of thing. And from Susan Jeffries, remind us again, please, how much is needed to reach the serendipity goal? Okay, so our goal now is 70,000. So we really, we're there. A couple mm -hmm. thousand, 2,000. Mm -hmm. And Kevin and I are going to write a check for 20,000. Mark Dunn at Moda Fabrics is going to donate 10,000. Hopefully we're going to raise um, um, 100,000. I think we'll probably get to 110,000. And along with that, we have our cross stitch. which is right here. So this week um, I showed this finished on my piece on the cross stitch channel, which is called Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube. And so this matches the third week behind me. And that's also free. So all of that is completely free. Not only do we give you cross stitch pattern for free, we give you quilt pattern, we give you extra patterns, and we do all that just um, for Make-A-Wish. Okay, so I'm gonna move to my next segment which I'm so excited about. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I woke up Monday morning. First thing I did is I got on Facebook. And I saw a lady and she said, who's gonna join the Red Sampler Quilt Along by Lori Holt? And I thought, what is she talking about? There's no sew along. I don't know anything about that. I think she's mistaken. I went to the blog and there's so long. Now, Lori, I don't know why she didn't tell me in advance. I had no advance warning. So she's doing the so long. So I'm gonna show you some pictures from her blog and tell you about it and show you what I'm doing versus what she's doing. So can we show the pictures? Mm -hmm. So it's called the Lori Holt Red Sampler Quilt Along. So what she's doing is she is sewing, she is sewing blocks from her Farm Girl Vintage, Farm Girl Vintage 2, and Vintage Christmas book. She's gonna use the setting in her Farm Girl Vintage 2. In this sew along, we're gonna make 20 12 inch blocks and 36 inch blocks. And then she's going to use the Great Granny Squared book, I think for the label of her quilt. So these are the three blocks she picked this week. So the very first one, is this one. This is Sunny Sunflower from Farm Girl Vintage. So I'm gonna show you mine and kind of talk through what I did. So in my house, this is what I have. This is a book something majiggy? Magazine holder. Oh. Magazine holder. Okay, so I have all of Lori's books in here. Now, to be fair, we publish them. So I just wanna be clear that we do. And um, so I, I was like, oh, awesome. I have them all in the right spot. I will tell you this little magazine holder, it's way, too, it's way overpriced, way too expensive. So I got my books and this is just how I store her books. So the first one is from Farm Girl Vintage and I'm gonna show you. So she tells you in the blog, go to page 66. So. I'm gonna go to page 66, cover up the instructions so you can't see them. Now, what she's using, can I show that picture of the red that you had? Yeah. So what she's doing is she's taking her red scraps. Now she's a fabric designer, so she's got her fabric in there, other people's fabric. So I'm gonna do the same exact blocks she does. I'm gonna be using my red fabrics that are left over from the Lori Holt Patriotic Bundle that we did something with in the summer and I'm not gonna buy anything. I'm gonna use what's in my 
stash, and Lily's gonna show you the mess that I made real quick. Mm -hmm. That is like a no-no. Like in my house, that is like, <laughs> cr that's a crime that has been committed in my house that there is a mess like that. <laughs> that is not okay. Like if my kids saw that, they would be freaking out. Like, oh my God, somebody robbed us. Cause I don't keep things like oh. that. But that's what I left it at because I was so behind. But I'm gonna go through everything on that shelf. If you look at that shelf again, like at the top, I've got Vintage Christmas. I've got a uh, Fig Tree and Bonnie Camille on the right side. And then on the left side is all Lori. At the bottom, it's like Farm Girl, it's Farm Girl prints, Farm Girl Companion prints. Prim is in there, Vintage Happy 2. And so I'm going to go through there and raid the whole stash and pull all my reds out. I'm not buying anything. Ooh. Now we are gonna make two bundles. One is gonna be a five or six piece background bundle for this now I'm gonna use the same background she has but I already have I already own all that so I'm not buying anything that's my goal is to not buy anything and I am going to show you how I did the first one so the first one I pulled all three of these fabrics from the patriotic bundle this I just already have her B backgrounds to make it quicker when I pieced this piece I did one big long strip set and subcut so that was easy and then I used our four inch square and square paper to make these and this one went really well it was late at night though I don't like to sew late at night but so that's my first one and then the next one is quilting day on page 112 of farm girl vintage 2 and that's Lori's block and you're gonna see that I copied her pretty oh I'm on the wrong book sorry <laughs> vintage Christmas yeah I'm, all, I'm like page 112 that doesn't look right so so this one she made in the six inch version so can you show again Lily mm -hmm. so that's her six inch version so when you look at that block each little segment is three inches. So I'm gonna give you two options here. I pulled my bucket that says six and a half inch squares. Lori taught me this method. I did two. So first I did this block. Now you'll see that I use that same fabric she has in her block. So Lily, can you go back? Mm -hmm. That is from the flea market flowers collection which i already have starched because i'm using that already in the sherry mcconnell sew along so i already mm -hmm. had it this i pulled from the patriotic bundle and then this i already have this is one of her b backgrounds we will have a fat quarter bundle of 18 to 19 reds it's going to take about two weeks for it to arrive and we're going to have a one yard bundle of six backgrounds b backgrounds but it's going to be a while so just start with what you have and if you feel like you need more you can get those but i wouldn't wait i would just go ahead and go for it so when i made this i used one inch finished triangle paper to make these this block is tough. So if you're more of a beginner, but you still want a six inch block, you can use the 12 inch instructions and make one segment of it. And all the instructions are here. So you can make it either way. And if you do that, you just need this triangle paper, which is two inch finished. So one inch finished, two inch finished. And on this one, this was, I was really tired. This was supposed to be that fabric. <laughs> But I was like, oh, I'm way too tired to redo it. So I just, and I'm gonna keep this. I just made it as an example so that you could see if this is too hard for you and you still wanna make a six inch block, you just follow the instructions for one unit in the 12 inch and you still have a six inch block. And that's why Lori's books are so versatile is you can make it your own. And you know, you don't have to follow exactly the block she uses. She always says be the boss of your own quilt. So do whatever you would like. I'm gonna show you, now, this fabric right here, I only had enough to do this, and when I got to this, I had to pull this, and I had leftovers in here. So that's why I used this, but also I ran out because I did my half square triangles the wrong way. Oh no. 
Yeah. So I was having a day. I was like, man, this is great. I mean, I had them all pieced, cut, everything. Totally wrong. Mm. So that's why I ran out of fabric and had to go to here. So it's always good to have scraps. So these will go in the trash because you cannot salvage that. So I'll just put them back in here. So that's what I did for that block. So this gives you a little bit of options. And then this is the block I made first. And this comes from Vintage Christmas book. Now these books from Lori, most of you already know, but they have six inch block instructions and 12 inch block instructions. Oh yeah, sorry, I'm pulling the spelling bee, sorry. <laughs> That's why I shouldn't have brought them all, but I just wanted y'all to see how, um, how, um, what page? Okay, um, got it. So, okay, so here's this instruction. So she wanted you to make this in a six inch. So what I did, I pulled my five and a half inch square bucket of scraps. So these all have Lori Holt. Like if you wanna look through my scraps, it's got uh, Lori Holt, that's Bonnie and Camille, Bonnie and Camille, Bonnie and Camille, Bonnie and Camille, Bonnie and Camille. <laughs> This one's got a lot of Bonnie and Camille in it. That's Lori's. There should be some fig tree in here because those are pretty much the three designers that I use most. Mm -hmm. So Lori, fig tree. Oh, Minnick and Simpson. Ooh. Vanessa Gertzen. So I do keep all that in here. So because I didn't have, there's two ways you can make this block to make it easier. You can follow her directions, which is great. That's one method. Another method you can do to make flying geese is I used the Eleanor Burns small flying geese ruler. The reason why is I pulled two pieces from here and I did reuse this fabric again, but I pulled, uh, or actually, yeah, I pulled two pieces from my scrap buckets. And with that method, I was able to do this. I could have used this, which is our, it's so Emma one and a half by three inch flying geese paper, but it is not as efficient fabric wise. So I didn't have enough fabric to do it. So you kind of, I just want to show you like when you're at home sewing, you don't have to follow the instructions. You can think about, okay, what do I have? What do I have first in this bucket? So I don't have to buy anything. And what tools do I have and which one works best for me? So that's what I decided I did this. Now, I didn't have enough fabric to do this, but these, that's another way you could do it. So, those are my blocks for this week. She's gonna do different blocks each week. She's gonna show them on Monday. And I'm gonna try to do them each week during the week to show you how my blocks look. And I'm gonna just leave this up here. And then I wanted to show you this. This came back in stock. This sold out and I didn't get one. So I, this is mine. This sold out like the second we got it and we got a bunch more. So this is called the... Oh, my Happy Place Tumbler. My Happy Place Tumbler. So this is gonna have my Starbucks tea in about 20 minutes when I'm done. Insulated tumbler. Insulated tumbler. My Happy Place Insulated Tumbler. So cute. So they came back in stock. I'm so excited. And these um, are very similar to the Yeti lids. So they, because um, I mostly use Yeti. So these fit, you can interchange them with different ones. You can even buy the ones. I will say they're super expensive that have the hole in them with the straw, because that's what I use. Super expensive, but at least I don't waste straws now. So super excited those came back in stock. Any questions before I go on? Because I still have a lot more. Oh, I said it wrong earlier. So Lori has something fun planned for the label of the red sampler quilt along, and she's going to use the spelling bee book. So, but if you don't want to buy all the books, you can use the same quilt size from another book. So if you're on a budget, you can buy the three books or you can buy one book and then pick whatever size she's doing, just pick whatever block you want. Now, what she's trying to do is pick, um, work with more of her traditional stars, just traditional blocks, like not her farm animals or her 
corn and tomato type thing. You know, she's using more of her traditional. So that's why she's using a combination of books. Mm -hmm. And she's trying to show you how she has designed this method. I mean, she is the original designer of this. If you see other people doing this, they took it from her. So she's showing you how to mix and match it. And she's always going to give you free stuff on her blog so that you get a lot of use out of the books where she doesn't want you to like buy the book, make one quilt. Buy another book, buy another book, buy another book. She, you know, you can reuse it over and over. Because, I mean, how many times have I made quilts out of her book? All the time. All right, yeah, you answered uh, people's number one question. Do they need to buy all the books? No. So she's using Farm Girl Vintage 2, Farm Girl Vintage 1, and Vintage Christmas. If you just wanted one book, Farm Girl Vintage. If you need two books, Farm Girl Vintage 2, and then, then I would add Vintage Christmas. And then if... You don't want the spelling bee book. It's really not a big deal because you can do a plain backing if you want. All right. Question from Erica Plow. Which is more ivory? Bella Solid 200 or Bella Bleach White PFD? Trying to figure that out for a new quilt. 200 is more ivory. Color 98 and color... No, the color 98 is the whitest. That Not... Yes, it's the whitest. All right, and then from Beryl Griffin Stew, to at what point do you end up ironing your fabric? Do you wait until it's completely dry or do you go ahead and iron while it's still a little damp? When you I wait till it's dry because if you don't, yeah. Unless I'm in like a hurry or something, but yeah, I let it dry. And so I'm gonna show you my Jolly Bar sew along real quick. So I've been working on this also. This is another sew along that we're doing at Fat Quarter Shop. So this is called Jolly Bar Book Three. These books use our Jolly Bars, which are our exclusive five by 10 inch rectangles that you can buy. And the book is very affordable at only $9.95. And we're on week two. So week one, we made this block. So I showed this last week. And you just go to our blog, this is our fabric requirements, and you just print it out. Then each week you come back and we give you the cutting. We say cut two fabric A's and then you go to the book for the size. So I am using Sunday Stroll. I am using the Perfect 10 ruler because it's so easy to use with Jolly Bars and Layer Cakes. Week two, we're making the homecoming block and we made it twice, so here's my two blocks. And I'm gonna give you a little tip. So here's the two blocks. And when you make these, when you use the Jolly Bar and you make your flying geese, when you trim right here, you have excess. So here's the excess. You can just cut, you can just sew a quarter inch from where you cut, open it, or you can put triangle paper on open it and then you know just trim it and when you open it it'll be the same so you can make four leftover half square triangles from here so you can get a half square triangle half square triangle half square triangle half square triangle so what i was thinking was you could do these and then just use them for our stitchy stars swirling stars swirling stars sew along now i haven't finished a project in a while so i haven't had any extra to make to add to that yet because i wait till i'm all the way done with projects um, but you could save these for that and the other two that are not here they're already in there i've already put them into those blocks so next time you see you'll see the other two so that's a way to save money and save your fabric and you don't even have to put it in the strap bucket because it's right there And then I'm gonna show I'm gonna show you a couple things I'm sewing at home, and then I'm gonna go to other things. So, this is our RBD block challenge, which is hosted by Riley Blake Designs. This is block eight. Those are the first blocks on. Yeah, top. this is block eight right here. So when I made this, I used five inch finished triangles on a roll. H500 to make these and I did make an addition to this block so what I'm trying to do in this sew along is I bought four fabrics from Fat Quarter Shop in the Prim collection by Lori Holt so I bought the pink the mint the brown and the background 
and you see this only uses two prints. So what I did is these fabric D's needed to be five and a half. So I just added green to one side and then trimmed it down to five and a half. And I just, it's about, I think it's about an inch and a half cut and an inch finished. And so that was, that was a way for me to get that green added in there. And then you guys had asked, I was going to wait till I had some dinosaur blocks done. I have a son that loves dinosaurs. He's 11. Aww. He loves dinosaurs. He says, this is what he says, dinosaur, dinosaur, rawr, rawr. And we're just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so funny. So I was going to wait until I had actual dinosaur blocks, but I haven't gotten to them yet. So these are my plant blocks. And this is all from the dinosaur quilt kit. We'll have more in stock in a couple of months. We're still waiting from, from Robert Kaufman. Ooh. So this is Robert Kaufman fabric, Elizabeth Hartman fabric, and Elizabeth Hartman pattern. So you make all of these at one time, all of these, all of these. So that's as far as I've gotten. And um, I'm a little bit scared to start the dinosaurs because let me show you, like, I'm a little oh, bit scared. So I have to have like a full quiet house to do that. And my kids are still not in school, so it'll get done eventually. But that's my dinosaur. Yay. And then my last thing that I have sewn is my low volume quilt. So for this quilt, I took the My Favorite Color booklet and the low volume fat quarter club at fat quarter shop and i this, i'm now through march now i do have enough fabrics left over to make a couple more blocks but i'll show you what i made so this um i have blocks one two three four five and eight done so this is one of my blocks and this is all using march or i mean mostly march and then this one now what i did on this one is you can see how wavy this is Look how wavy it is, it's so wavy. I made this half an inch bigger all the way around and then trimmed it down because it was waving. If I would have not done that, it would you would see a big wave right here. I was a little bit unhappy with my, this one I really like. Ooh. Yeah, so, and then I've shown this previously. This is the big piece, the big one. This is like section one. So. I'm making this for my sister-in-law for Christmas, and I'm just keeping it all in my little box that I got at Target. But I do have plenty. I think I will have enough through like July to have the whole quilt finished. Wow. Yeah. And I thought this was pretty cool. It's like the little British flag, and I think this was from the first month. But I'm saving every little piece of fabric. So in my box, I'm saving every little piece of fabric. So. Like even, this is what I have left of this piece. So I'm just saving every little piece, put it in the quilt. When I'm done with my quilt completely, I will cut all of this up and put it in my scrap box, scrap buckets. So I'm excited about that. Um, I'm excited that I got some progress on that. I'm gonna show you a brand new kit that is coming out. And this I'm super excited for, cause we're gonna do a sew along. So, when I do sew alongs, one of the questions that you guys ask sometimes is, how do I pick my sew alongs? I pick what I like. You'll never see me put something on here that I don't love. Now, the I will say that low volume, I don't love that. I don't like it at all, actually. I would never have that in my house, but my sister-in-law would love it, and that's all that matters. Oh. Like, she, it would totally match her house. Like, it's very vintage. Like, she'll love it. So as long as she loves it. I mean, I'm not going to give her a pink quilt. She'd, she'd give it back to me and say, that is horrible. Oh. Um, so this, I loved this fabric when I saw it. It's called Sincerely Yours. It's by Sherry and Chelsea. It ships in the fall. And these are the fabrics. So I've already, I got my fabric so that I can like stitch ahead. But I just love the fabrics. But I'm gonna show you the quilt because she let us borrow the quilt so that we could take photography. Ooh. And this is actually the first time I've seen it. So Sherry McConnell made this. It is awesome. I cannot wait to make this. I cannot, like, I just want to go home and make it right now. So pretty. So it, the pattern is actually called Together. But when I 
put it online, I didn't know it was called together. So on our website, it's called Stitch Pink Sincerely Yours Quilt Kit. We're pre-selling them, and the reason we're pre-selling them is once they're gone, they're gone, but we're pre-selling them because I'm doing a sew along with it. She's actually the one doing the sew along. I'm just sewing along with her. And so she has all the dates on her blog. So go to The Quilting Life. I mean, this is so pretty. I love it. And we do have the pattern available now. The fabric will be coming out in the fall. This is what she put on the back. I don't know if the back we're selling is the same or not. It might be. I think it is because I think I texted her to ask her what. But I'm very excited to do this so along with you. She's already got videos on her YouTube channel. She's got, um, there's stuff on Moda's blog about it. There's stuff on her blog. I'm sure her daughter Chelsea's going to be part of it. But I cannot wait to make this quilt. This is like Kimberly all over it. Pink, <laughs> red. Oh, yes. yes. Love it. Okay. I'm going to show you some new stuff. We have something exciting for the end. So we have some new t-shirts, Stitching with Housewives. I was supposed to bring mine today and I forgot. This comes in sizes small, all the way to extra large. Super soft, 3X, what'd I say? Oh, sorry, 3X. And then I wanted to show y'all this. Okay, I always find very interesting what sells. This fabric, this designer, I cannot keep her on the shelf. So I decided, because I love that you guys watch me on YouTube, I'm showing you now, because when it sells out, we can't get more. <laughs> but this fabric, I cannot even imagine what you would make with it. So <laughs> this one, I put together this bundle. This is only the coordinates, but we do have some one yard bundles and some bigger fat quarter bundles, but this is more of like the basics. But, oh my gosh, y'all, I don't know what, Look at this. It's like the old maid cards. Didn't y'all play old maid when you were little? I, oh I my gosh. Oh, I played. My grandma, she used to cheat. So in her house, she had a recliner and I would sit on the couch and we would play Uno and she would throw her cards between the, between the thing. I'm not <laughs> kidding. No, she, she did not let us win. She was like not about to have some grandchild of hers beat her. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's so that's one of the panels. But yeah, this sells so amazing. So hopefully this, I'm hoping this year we don't sell out so fast. I'm gonna show you this one sideways so you can see it. But I cannot imagine, I mean, I cannot imagine. People That's love, really cool, it's really different. People different. love it, like I'm telling you, this fabric last year, I never even showed it because it sold out so fast. I mean, we bought a ton of it too, so hopefully it still oh sells. Gosh. But I just wanted to show you all that. Plus, I wanna show something different each time. But yes, oh my gosh, look at this. It's like, I love the colors. I mm -hmm. will say I love, like, I love the bundle that I already moved aside. I love the bundle, but like, and I love the zippers and I love the um, measuring tape, but the women, oh, they're scary. <laughs> I don't need those in my house. They'll be bad luck. Oh. Look at the kitty. Oh, that's cute. My dog would get that kitty. Oh. He would get him. And those are pin cushions? I, I don't, don't know what they are. Coming up. Yeah, pin cushions. Yeah, zippers. There's. A, I'm trying to find the measuring tape. It's my favorite. Those are like the little snaps that you put on your. I don't know pants or whatever. Hold on, yeah. I gotta find the measuring tape. Maybe it's not this line. Maybe it's I, a different line. I don't line. think so. Yeah. Yeah, it's a different line. So see, I get confused. Same designer, different line. Okay. I want to show you Lily released this video on Monday. This is a free block pattern called London Roads. This fabric is... Sophie by Brenda Riddle. There you go. And free block pattern. If you want a paid PDF to make different sizes, table runner, lap, twin, queen, you can buy that. That's just a low price PDF. And I'm going to show you the quilt. I'm gonna show it to you sideways. It's so pretty. Let's see. It was designed by Jocelyn, made by Terry, and Mike at mylongarm.com quilted it. So pretty. Ooh. So if you want something to make this weekend, here you go, free pattern. Mm -hmm. Free block pattern, make some blocks. 
Okay, I'm gonna answer any questions and then we are going to um, do a little designer mystery feature Ooh. that we've never done before. Ooh. I'm not sure how it's gonna go. All right, uh, I'm gonna let some extra questions roll in. We did have two new YouTube members. First YouTube member is Shauna Rodriguez. Welcome, Shauna. Thank you. And then another new YouTube member, Carol Wagner, or is it Carol Wagner? Let me know in the comments. Awesome. Welcome, Carol. Okay, is Old Made available for pre-order? It's online for sale. Like, it's here. So we're gonna do a little designer mystery quilt fest. And what we're doing is we're celebrating the designer mystery for 2021. And um, we do have a contest. You can find all of that on our social media. But I wanted to show you, now this one, I can only show you a corner. This is 2021. We do have spots left in this program. So we sell this as you can just get the blocks. You can buy the finishing, which is everything but the blocks, and you can buy the backing. Now I'm showing you this because when, when it starts in May, it will sell out. It will probably be sold out before it starts. So this is your last little peek at it. I love it. Now I'm gonna show you all the quilts. We started this in 2008. Wow. I have made all of these quilts. Some of the quilts, we're gonna have pop-up images and some of them we're just gonna skip over. That means I've either lost the quilt or sold the quilt on eBay. But I do know that I have lost a quilt. I found out this morning. So, oh, we gotta find that quilt. Maybe it's in my house, I don't know. Um, but I have made all of these quilts. Okay, so Jocelyn's gonna help me. She actually has probably designed every single one of these. Ooh. She's gonna help me hold them. Go Jocelyn. Oh, how are you gonna get past there? I'm just gonna try past. Okay. Okay. You can also go the other way, that's fine. <laughs> Jocelyn's doing acrobatics off camera. So all of these were designed by Motive Designers, most of them. This is 2008, the fabric, I mean, God, that's so long ago. How many years ago is that? 13. Whew, 13 years. So this was our first one. So you're going to see how we grew from this. You designed this, right, Jocelyn? Yeah, I think you did. Oh, well. I don't know if I want to admit that I designed this because it's kind of funky. <laughs> now, and then it, um, we sell some of these as PDFs because you have asked for it, but we're just showing you because I think it's fun to see the evolution from like. This is the 2010 one. Yeah, like, we're going to skip 2009 because. We don't have the image. Before. Not only do we not have the image, I don't know where the quilt is, so we don't even know what it looks like. This one was Kate Spain fabric. Wait, get it. Oh, what am I doing? No, you got, you're going you, the wrong way. You guys way. are doing it sideways. You're going the wrong way. There we go. <laughs> so this is uh, 2010, 12 Days of Christmas, Kate Spain fabric. Jocelyn definitely designed this one. Do mm -hmm. you own this one? I do. Brenda yeah. Riddle, I think, designed this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Here, so the bottom. So Brenda Riddle designed this one. She's the designer of that last fabric I showed you. And then I gave this as a gift to Jocelyn, so it's at her house. So you can tell it's it's um, been washed because we use it. I know she uses her quilts. Unlike mine, you're gonna see the difference. Mine, hers is all washed. She uses it. Mine are all crispy. <laughs> okay, the next one is in my bedroom. So this had to come from my house, and this is in my bedroom. Hangs. I love it. This one is. Mm. Strawberry Fields Fabric by Fig Tree 2011. And Joanna designed this one. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying the name of the quilters because I don't remember all of them and I don't want to say the wrong thing. So that's the bottom. Yay! That's one of my favorites. Okay. This, this, one, I love this one. This is 2012 mm -hmm. Vintage Modern Fabric by Bonnie Camille. I think we might have it upside down, but that's okay. Um, I get both it's around. hard to tell. And then J Jocelyn designed this one. You did. You designed this one. I did? Mm-hmm. Okay, just hold it. Oh, I see where you're going. There we go. Whoever designed it, we're all a team, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Is this one, was this at home or work? 
Good it hung in Denise's place. office. Oh, oh, it hangs in Denise's office. Oh, that's, I'm so glad we found it. See, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know where any of these quilts are. I need to have a... I felt a little weird ripping down quilts from walls, but... It's for... It's for this one's on somebody's wall, too, I think. Yeah, this one... in Elva's office, our old office. Okay, so Elva is customer service manager, and she has this in her office. So this is Avalon Fabric by Fig Tree, 2013. Mm -hmm. And then we'll show the, let's grab here and then show the bottom. So pretty. So yeah, we hang these in the, in the offices. Yeah, all over the office. Okay, this one is, this one. was it designed by us or her? Uh, she did. Okay, Lisa Bonjean. Oh, Aditta Sitar. Aditta. Okay, so Aditta used to, she is now a designer for Andover. She used to be a designer for Moda. And this was one of her collections called Snowbird. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite. But look at this border. Okay, let's show. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me. I didn't like doing this. This was not fun. Oh. You want to show it on the table? Mm -mm, just right here. This, this, is, this is not, uh-uh, no. I remember making this. And if y'all remember something, that's not a good sign. <laughs> so yeah, I don't, where did you find this one? It, yeah, it's, uh, it's in the quilt chest here. Okay, so yeah. This one's gorgeous, and we did this amazing photo shoot with it, and people still find those photos and like ask about them. Uh, we okay. So when she says she did an amazing photo shoot, she jumped over a chicken wire fence, and like they got all kinds of stickers in their in their shoes, and then Aditya was like, "What is this?" And we were like, "Well, in Texas, we have sticker burrs." So they were like, "Weren't y'all covered in?" But I was, I sat in my car, I was like, I'm not going over that. <laughs> uh, I'm not doing any of that. Okay, hang on. We, that is 2016, we have a pop-up for 2015. Oh. Okay. Oh, yes, yes, 2015. Yes. Okay, 2015. Yeah. Snowman Gatherings by Primitive Gatherings. Who designed it? Lisa, Lisa. Lisa Bonjean designed this mm -hmm. one. And it was and all house themed, like all the blocks were houses and buildings. Mm -hmm. And I sold it on eBay. I think that's what we're gonna say because I can't find it so we don't really know where it is this one is Little Miss Sunshine 2016 by Layla Boutique who designed this you Vanessa did Vanessa Gerdson designed it we just thought it'd be fun to show all these designer mystery quotes I mean some of you guys have made all of them and this one hangs in a conference room yeah it's oh that's right okay it's, it's faded missing. look at it it's missing. we can swap it out no, no, no. It, no, I don't want to swap it out because I don't want anything else to fade. It's totally faded because oh. that conference room doesn't have um, yeah, shade because I don't want it to have. It is totally faded. Totally. See? See, this is the true color. Oh, totally wow. ruined. And when I hung it up in the conference room, I realized I did the borders wrong. That is a crime right there. That is a crime <laughs> that my borders are not the right way. Every time I see it, oh, I think of because the that. stripes are going. I did the stripes wrong, yep. Never noticed it till it was in the conference room. The next one's 2017. Spring Aling by American Jane. Oh, I designed this yeah. one. I remember this one. Yay. <laughs> this is the only one I remember designing. This is huge. Beautiful. So, yeah, this one. Oh, so pretty. Mm -hmm. And this one, we, I think we used the Eleanor Burns yeah. ruler. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yay, I remembered something. <laughs> I remembered one thing. Okay. Two more. This one is also in my bedroom. And the funny thing about this is my least favorite color is purple. You'll never see me with purple. Mm -hmm. But my real least favorite is green. And this is right in my bedroom. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh-huh. I don't like green, but it's, that's my joke because I obviously like green. I just think I don't. <laughs> so this is 2018 Ella and Ollie by Fig Tree Quilts. And who designed it? I did. I Jocelyn, yay! Yay, go I Jocelyn. I thought she designed all of them. Yeah. Also, go Jocelyn and Kimberly for holding all of these up. This is my workout. That's all I got. <laughs> And this one, I think that Nubbin quilted this one. And I think I used wool batting because it's, 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 oh, it's heavy and thick. Mm -hmm. And she's the only one that would do wool batting. I think she must have quilted this one. 
because it's all this is probably one of the last custom quiltings i kind of decided that with all the quilts i did i could no longer afford the custom so this is probably one of my last custom quilts okay next one is pop-up yeah oh pop-up or Featured by April Rosenthal, 2019. And this is the one that I realized this morning is missing. So who knows where it is? It's it could, it sure. could be totally under the stuffy pile in Peyton's room because I find a lot of stuff in that pile. <laughs> so no, I really, we don't know where it is, yeah. which means I lost it, I'm sure. And then this one, we can't show the whole thing, right. she said. Yes, no, so no, this is the one, this is, all of these are sold out except for the one I started with. So this is Bloomington Fabric by Layla Boutique. And it ends in May. So we can show. I'll just show that. This part's safe. Yay. Yeah. So yay. So if y'all have any questions for Jocelyn about designer mystery, how the process goes, she could tell you. What we do is we try to pick an A group, which means a really something that is going to appeal to more people. And then, like, you kind of come up with the theme. Yes. Each year, we kind of try to pick a different theme just to kind of um, give it more flair. And it also lets the designers uh, have a little bit more creative license. So they're not just giving, you know, same old blocks each time, but they get to think outside the box a little bit and push their creative boundaries for us. So um, they submit their designs. Um, they are usually pretty perfect. Don't need a lot of work. Okay. And then they all come together and they look amazing for you guys. Okay. So how does it work where Kimberly was saying like, oh, Jocelyn designed this, but this is also a designer mystery. How does that process work? So the designer mystery is going to refer to the blocks. The blocks are all from 12 different designers. Ah. The setting, uh, if we can have another designer do it, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll try to get that done because it's always exciting to see different hands in that pot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Kathy Corinor says, love all the designer mystery quilts. Will you release all of the patterns? So all of the patterns should be online. There's a couple not available, and those are just because other people designed them. But the blocks, um, let's see, Peace on Earth is not available because we can't find the file. Because 2008, I mean, you know, that was a really long time ago. 12 Days of Christmas also, we can't find the file. So some of them, I mean, yeah. Everything from 2011 is available as a PDF, as a full set. The ones before, like the finishing patterns were like written and designed by other people, so we don't have those files to share. Mm -hmm. But everything from 2011, that's a good, gosh, almost 10 years of patterns are yeah. there. Wow. Yeah, and they're always 12 inches, right? Always 12 inches, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you could intermix those blocks with Lori's books. Yeah, and we've had people in the past who um, have like finished the blocks and they didn't uh, get the finishing kit in time or something like that. And we can always tell them to like, look back and look at the settings for the different patterns from before. And if there are settings you like there, you can use those because it's always mm. 12 blocks that finish at 12 inches. That's cool. From Paula Lobo, if we do not buy the finishing kit, can we still do the block of the month? Yeah, mm -hmm. you just get the block pattern. So you'll have 12 blocks and then you just figure out how you want to finish it. We will sell the finishing pattern separate after the quilt kits, all, all the finishing kits sell out. Michael Stafford says, Jocelyn, you are my designing hero. She is everybody's Aww. designing hero. That's true. She's amazing. Well, thank you. <laughs> I used to design stuff and I don't anymore. I'm just like, oh, Jocelyn will do it. So guys, um, have a great weekend. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next Monday. See you Monday. All right, bye everyone.